they said that everybody, all the nursery people, work for the Dolmotos. And Dolmotos are the ones who really started it uh, earlier, so they taught everybody else. They worked there and they learned how to do it. The Domoto family, you probably heard of them uh, from Wakayama, the same uh, prefecture where our family is from, uh, had, had started the nursery business and it, I guess grandfather heard about it. Dad came in uh, the turn of the century, 1907. He came by himself as a young man. Got to work in agriculture, in the nursery business, yeah. So they just come off the boat and then they just, sound like they did a lot of fruit, fruit business, okay. fruit trees, trimming and picking. And yeah. Then he ran into the Domoto brothers and he, he, he worked there. Okay. He sort of learned the business there, I think. I think everybody who's in the nursery business, they all worked there at one time. In, in a way, it was competition, but uh, in a way it wasn't because, because when we started, we started with nothing. And and then and then we we went to our local nurse nursery people to borrow their equipment and borrow their tools and everything else. And kind of share. Yeah, and we and we shared out. and shared information and 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 that's how we started. I thought they did a good job, really, to think that you know, most of them to start off with they didn't know English and all that, and so they went into business, and they had all kinds of rocks thrown in front of their path. <laughs> all these uh, obstacles they had to fight. Hard <laughs> work, wouldn't you say, huh, Gilbert? Yeah, it was a lot of hard work. In the early days, when they were selling cut flowers, my mother-in-law would wake up early in the morning, load them on a wheelbarrow, and they would walk about five or six blocks to the streetcar line. And she would help him load the flowers on the streetcar, and he would go about 100 blocks down to the ferry landing, get on the ferry, go to San Francisco, and sell his flowers. Then he would come back home, take a short nap, and get back to work in the greenhouse. Um, but my, during that time, my mother-in-law was the flower girl. All the women, I think, in the nursery were the, uh, the labor, shall I say. It was a lot of work. Really, they were put in long hours, very long hours. And um, sometimes I wonder how she did it. That's important. He, uh, he had a basket, as I recall, on his bike, two-wheel bike, old, one of the old uh, two-wheel bi bikes. And he delivered the flowers, riding the bike, <laughs> delivering those flowers to the floors. Grandfather's Day, they had to lug the basket of flowers Grandmother used to take the flashlight early in the morning from from Rich, uh, from Wall Avenue and walk up to Petrero Avenue. The streetcar was running on that on the tracks there on Petrero Avenue, so they would like 4:30 in the morning or something, rain or shine, and take this basket of flowers, and then Grandfather would take it and ride to Oakland. Then they had a ferry there that would take them to San Francisco. But it was no easy job. In the grandfather's day, it was really, talk about hard work. But they were used to hard work, you know? So they'd get up like way early in the morning, go out and cut all the flowers, take them into the barn, sort them, bunch them, tie them up, put them in boxes, and then load them on his pickup truck, and my dad would drive it out to South San Francisco, deliver them, come back home. So sometimes in the summer, it would be like past 11 o'clock at night, and then they'd get up and do it again the next day. I always noticed that 
mom and dad ate really quickly when we were growing up. It was like we'd sit down and they'd go, <laughs> and they'd eat really fast. Okay, and then they were done. Dad okay. would. Well, dad, okay, in particular. But um, mom also ate kind of quick. And I asked, what happened? And why, 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 why do you eat like this? And apparently, see, when, when mom married into the family, um, dad and his brothers would come in from the greenhouse, they'd eat, and then they'd have to go back out to work. And mom would just end up sitting there by herself <laughs> because everyone never heard of and, <laughs> and it was either she learned to eat faster so she'd keep up with them, or she was stuck there at the table by herself. And that was just kind of like life on the greenhouse, you know, like on the farm. In those days, uh, it was uh, hard work. So it, whatever they could do, you know, they done it. And people ask about, you know, the success of the market and the longe longevity of the market. I, I think part of it is we are built on character. Hopefully if there's a theme that comes through on why this nursery business has lasted for 100 years, is if you look at the personality <coughs> of the Issei who walked into those meetings, top hat uninvited, and sat down in the front row. If you look at the Nisei who was threatened at, gun po at a knife point and told not to come back to the nursery. And if you look at the Sansei who get up three times in the middle of the night and won't let people, you know, won't take no for an answer, I think that's part of the reason. Perseverance, more than anything. Uh, don't complain. I heard very little complaining. Oh man, it's hot out there, you know. Oh, I'm dirty. I never heard things like that. And when I think about it, no complaining. Uh, it's not, I don't know. What, I guess there's a Japanese word called gaman, just take it or something like that. Run, run through it. It also pays um, a tribute to the Issei Nisei uh, mindset. Um, I think that the Issei set a tempo. Uh, they were incredibly hardworking. They just refused to give up, and, and they instilled, of course, a lot of these things in the Nisei. And I think uh, the disruption of the war and the incarceration and, and all those things just, I mean, motivated them more. Um, instead of crushing them the way it would have crushed many people, it just really made them fight back even harder. And so as Sansei, I think that, um, you know, we've had, uh, we've benefited from the values that they shared with us. Naomi talked a little bit about, uh, you know, who we are uh, as personalities, is has a lot to do with the environment that we were in, you know, with and what we were taught from our parents. And I think that I think the company, the culture of the company and the values of the company are really a very, very strong reflection of our parents and, and of their parents. I really think they were courageous. I think they um, had a spirit of wonder and adventure and a positiveness to follow through, uh, a willingness to endure a lot of hardships. And I think they put that positive twist on what was going on. And I think uh, they're admirable people. And I really um, think that uh, the nursery business and the growing of flowers uh, added a lot to the, um, well, I think it was a wonderful contribution of the Japanese Americans to take that area, which takes a lot of work, and to do it proudly and beautifully. And uh, I'm very proud of being um, a grandchild and a <laughs> of, of that heritage. If I could still make a living growing, I'd still be doing it. It wasn't about uh, um, the hours or the pay. It was about this, uh, uh, what, what you had to do to get things done.
uh, I still felt the commitment to, uh, to run the nursery to the very end. It's important that uh, the Japanese growers um, uh, be remembered and honored for the, all their uh, generations of hard work and their contribution. I had some uh, older Japanese people working that they had st stopped their nurseries or whatever and they wanted to work, keep continue working. And to be honest with you, I thought I'd, I'd work till I died. Because that's the way my, my dad and my uncle and my grandfather, you know, the nursery was still going when they, when they quit or they passed away. So. I didn't appreciate it until later. And I didn't realize that the, the family is, is, is this kind of lifestyle. You're connected to everything you do is connected to the family somewhere to maintain the family. And I, I appreciate that now. Because we miss guys like Norm and his family, seriously, what, what you did. And like you said, you didn't realize what you had when you were doing it. And we didn't realize what we had when you guys were here. When you go away, then you realize, oh no, what happened? You, know, you create a hole, you create a vacuum. So that was my life. Yeah. My life was Sunnyside Nursery for 40 years. To me, it was a one great adventure. Uh -huh. I learned so much. A naive woman getting into an unknown industry and growing with it. A lot of what I have now. Is because of the nursery? Yeah. yeah, of course. I like the flower and I arrangement, doing the arrangement and it was a good life.